Hold it at an angle, you can see it got better drying out. Yeah, when it dries out. Now, if you have emulsion on the, excuse me, if you have emulsion, emulsion or clay stuck to the toner, the yeah. don't Sorry. worry about it. Okay, that that's you're going to take the toner off, so you're not worried about stuff that's embedded in the toner. Okay, now, all right. Oh, okay, it's drying out. You can really <coughs> see it now. If you look at it now, see when I first tan it around, it didn't look that bad. Now yeah. look at it. it still looks pretty good. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's what you have to do. You have to make sure it's dry. You saw it the first time around, and it's like a little fog on it. Okay, so. Yeah. Now, I'll look under the light. Okay, I see some white, so I'm going to still have to work on it. So, uh, hot water might actually help this. <laughs> okay, um, let's go to the next slide while we're... I've tried it a little bit, and I used the photo paper, and I found that if I left the paper in the water for about 30 minutes to an hour, the paper would slide right off. Yeah. No problem. But you have to be careful because there was still a thin gelatin coating on there that you had to wipe it off. I'm too impatient, Will. I can't. I, I, I just have a question. Is there a particular reason why you don't use the specifically made toner transfer paper like they have at Tanner's? Uh, did I, how did I start this out? I said I was cheap. <laughs> okay? And that toner paper is pretty expensive. Yeah. Like, how expensive? I think it's like a buck a sheet or something. Buck a sheet. That much? Yeah. Golly! <laughs> Versus 18 cents a sheet. <laughs> well, and the other thing is you never, you never have it when you need it. And you know what? I've heard people say they have the same problem. At, well, I, I've used it myself, and it comes off extremely easy. Like, basically, as soon as you dip yeah. it in the water, the sheet just goes whoosh, and pulls right off by itself. Does it, if it does the, the, the emulsion when it dries, and you see the little... It doesn't okay. leave anything. All right, well, I could say it's another option. It's easy to find. I think it's, what is it called, Blue Dot or something? I don't remember the name, but, yeah, they have it at Tanner's. Cost versus aggravation training. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I could say, okay. okay, with water, with uh, hot water, and, uh, okay, and I'll look at this dry, and I'll, if it's still not going, I will try You've probably got some hot water in the bathroom there. I tried that, and I couldn't get it. That, I, I actually let it run and run and run, and it was still cold. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with it. Again. We're going to microwave. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. The next one is trace and spacing. All right, depending on the amount of current you have, you have to have different trace trace widths. That's, that's pretty, pretty obvious. And, also, the thickness of the copper is going to impact that. And this this chart right here uh, is kind of one of those rough rule of thumbs. And it's okay for you to get going. But I recommend this uh, width calculator here. And you just put in uh, your max current, uh, whatever temperature, the default's 10 degrees. And that's, I, I did this to match this table. Uh, 